Hey, all right, it's Friday. That means time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Learn Excel. we joined later by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. Today, a question sent in by YouTube. Someone wants to uh, figure out how to delete any time that swim or ski appears in a column. And it can be any version or variant of swim. So swimming or skiing or swimwear. We want to delete all of those. So I'm going to take a look at how to do this with filter and then with advanced filter. Now, in the filter drop downs here, of course, we get pick specific things. But I want to go to the text filters. And you see we have things like contains or does not contain. Uh, now, both of these are going to lead to the same spot, the custom filter. So we'll go to contains. And now we get back to what we had in Excel 2003, the custom option under auto filter. And I can say that it contains ski or contains swim. Now, it's interesting that in the old version of Excel, we didn't have contains. You would have had a would have had to have said that you want to use equals and then put an asterisk before and after. Now, these are exactly equivalent uh, items. So we click OK and you see that we get just the swimming and skiing items. Now we can select those right click and delete row, delete the entire sheet row. That's what I told you to do. Click OK. And when we clear the filter, we have just the non skiing and swimming items. All right, so that's one way to go. Kind of a hassle to go through and uh, and set that up all the time. So I want to show you something called an advanced filter. Now in the advanced filter, we're going to have a criteria range. The criteria range up here is going to say that, hey, we're looking for star swim star. The next row, that's an or star ski star. And now we can come here and click advanced and say we're going to filter the list in place. The criteria range is going to be this heading plus the two things we're looking for. Click OK. And now we have just the swimming and skiing. And I can delete the records just like before. Now, here's an interesting one. Let's make a copy of this. And we'll clear that filter. What if I wanted to show the things that aren't swimming and skiing so that way I could copy those? Well, this is really wild. When you change this to be not equals to, uh, if you've ever heard of anything called Boolean logic, when you have a not, uh, it needs to change the ands to ors and the ors to ands. If we would have used this criteria range right here, click advanced, uh, click OK, it doesn't filter anything out. The trick is, uh, because what it, the reason it doesn't filter anything out, let me explain this, is when it gets to swimming, it says, oh, well, this should be shown because it's not ski. And when it gets to skiing, it should be shown because it's not swim. So we need to take this data heading and copy it over to column F. And then we'll cut and paste. So now we've joined these two things by or. Hey, check this word. Is it not swimming or is it not skiing? And if either of those are true, then it'll be shown. So we come back here to our advanced filter. We'll change this criteria range. Change the criteria range to be two columns by two rows. Click OK. And now we get the things that are not skiing and swimming. We can uh, copy those and go to a brand new spot and get just those items. Hey, we'll send it over to Mike. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Wow, I hope you guys had your notepad out. That was an amazing lesson in filtering. Hey, you got to see how in earlier versions we used equals and then the wild card. In more recent versions, you could use contain. You got to see advanced filter. This was an or criteria, so we find swim or ski. And then over here, totally brilliant. This is an and criteria because it's on the same road. Each record to keep has to be not ski and not swim. Wow, totally amazing. I'm going to do a, a formula here. Come over here. And we're actually going to use the search function. Let's see how the search function works. Search. We're going to tell it to find some text like swim, F4 to lock it, comma, within this other text string. Now, search right now will deliver one because swim starts at the first character. But down here, go swimming will get one, two, three, four. So it will deliver a four. So really, this function is going to deliver an error or a number. So we'll use that pattern to our advantage uh, later on. Now, oh, 
but st let's we didn't get ski right so let's come up here I'm going to use the same trick Mr. Excel did. I'm going to highlight both of these, and I'm uh, going to highlight them and hit the F9 key. F9 key will convert and actually type out the array syntax for you, so you don't have to do it. Now, what's nice is you don't have to remember the curly brackets contain the array, that uh, semicolons or rows and commas or column. Now, let's see if this works. I'm going to Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Oh, but it uh, it didn't pick up ski. Now let's try this what if we double click and since this right here this argument is the one that's giving us the trouble it's expecting a single text string we gave it two so it makes an, an array if we do control shift enter that is not going to help either really what we need notice the curly brackets because I did uh, control shift enter what we need is to put search the search results inside of a function that can interpret the array part of this. The function to do that is lookup. Lookup. Now, lookup is a function like some product that can handle arrays without Control Shift Enter. So, but we need to give it a lookup value. Remember, this search function is only going to return the number of characters at the position where uh, our text we're looking for starts. Well, if we give it a lookup value of one more than the maximum number of characters, this will work just fine. So 2 caret 15. Now 2 caret 15, that's one more character. That'll just cover everything. So we'll always uh, find uh, a number, what, whatever number search spits out. I'm going to close parentheses. Now I got to tell you something. This formula right there, I saw this for the first time at the Mr. Excel message board at a challenge that Mr. Excel posted. It's actually a contest, and Houdini posted this formula. Totally awesome. Now uh, let's. We don't even have to Control Shift Enter. All we have to do is Control Enter and double click and send it down. Now. There we have it. We have um, one one. We have all the numbers. We have numbers and N A not available. Now I want to point out something about the two to the fifteenth. When I first saw this, I was like, "What? How do I know that that's the maximum number of characters?" I went over here and did two to the fifteen, and sure enough, it's thirty-two thousand seven hundred sixty-eight. But then I did the repeat function. I said, hey, please repeat the explanation point 2 to the 15 times. And what did it do? It returned an error. It said, forget you. I know that that's too many characters. But then I did 2 caret 15 minus 1 to repeat that. And sure enough, it worked. It showed all the characters. So that's just a way that I proved to myself that that number actually uh, is is the number of characters one more than is allowed. Now, what do we need to do here? Well, two things. If you want a true for the ski, skiing, swim, then we're going to take uh, this uh, range of NAs and 1 and put is number. That'll give a true where the, a number is. If you wanted the true for the in NA, you'd use is, you'd use the is NA right there, but I'm going to use is number. Is NA and is number just uh, looks at whatever it is and says true or false. I'm going to control enter, double click and send it down. There we have it. We have our trues for the ones we want to delete. If we'd used is NA, this would deliver a true. I'm going to click in one cell and sort, right click, sort. Right clicking sorting is in uh, uh, 2007, not in earlier versions. Earlier versions just go to the data menu or data ribbon. So I sorted. I got all the trues at the bottom. I better move this one up here before I delete. And then now I can just highlight the rows, right, just like that, and right click delete. And so there uh, is one way to do it with a formula. All right, we'll see you next trick. Mike, that is a beautiful formula. Excellent. I love those formulas that come from the Mr. Excel message board, Houdini and Aladdin and other folks like that. Uh, just to point out to people that I took some of those best formulas and put them in a book called Excel Gurus Gone Wild. So if you like the trick that Mike showed and want to learn more about wild formulas like that, formulas that frankly will make your head spin, uh, check out that book at your uh, local bookstore. Well, hey, on behalf of Mike and myself, I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast.